TSN presents Labatt's Blue Jays Baseball. Brought to you by Labatt's Blue, the clean, true taste of Canada. By SO retailers and agents across Canada. By your local bottler of Coca-Cola Classic. And by General Motors of Canada Limited. From Comiskey Park in Chicago, it's game two of this three-game series between the White Sox and the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, yesterday on our telecast, we told you that the Blue Jays were interested in first base coach Terry Bevington as their new manager. Pat Gilling, Paul Beast, and Gord Ash interviewed uh, Bevington on Thursday. Well, as late as 5.30 this afternoon, Bevington had not arrived at the ballpark, and it looks like the Blue Jays are just a little more than interested. Well, Fergie, any time a manager, a prospective manager, gets a second interview, he has to impress the people he's talking to, and obviously, Paul Beeston and Pat Gillick wanted to talk once again with Terry Bevington. It's really interesting because he kind of comes out of nowhere. He's a relatively new major leaguer. He's only had eight years of minor league managing experience, but it seems as though the Blue Jays are really interested in the White Sox first base coach. Right now, Cito Gaston is handling the club, and they've won three out of four. Last night was a big win, nine to three over the White Sox. Today, the Blue Jays will be sending their ace left-hander, Jimmy Key, at four and two. They need a good game from Key tonight to try to string a few more games together. Sean Hillegas at one and four will go to the mound for Chicago. So the White Sox and the Blue Jays coming up right here on TSN. Back at Comiskey Park, we're talking with tonight's starting pitcher, Jimmy Key. And Jimmy, there's been a lot of turmoil for the first time in the Blue Jays' history with Jimmy Williams being fired, Cito Gaston has taken over. But basically, one bright spot has been the starting pitching all the way along this year. Yeah, it's probably since I've been here, it's been best, the most consistent uh, for my six years here. Uh, the guy, everybody in the rotation is pretty much thrown consistently well. Guys had some bad starts, but for the most part, guys are throwing good and keeping us in the game. And uh, I think that's the reason we've won as many as we have is our starting pitching. The thing about this ball club is, although you're in sixth place at this time, you can really make up a lot of ground with a good hot streak. Yeah, we're only four and a half games out. Uh, you know, you win four or five in a row in this division right now, and you're first or second place. So uh, the morale is good on the club. We know. Uh, season we're a veteran team basically and uh, we're gonna play it out and see what happens what's the feeling in the clubhouse about uh, the possibility of a manager there's some names being bantered around in the clubhouse you know there's really not been much talk about it surprisingly guys are just uh, we're happy Cito's here we're playing well right now and we're just trying to win some ball games and uh, whoever comes in I don't think it's gonna be a problem for for him because I think uh, this ball club wants to try to win this year and I think we're gonna give a good showing well, the thing about this club is uh, you've got a lot of spirit. The ball players have a lot of spirit, and it's just a matter of getting this thing all together back on the right track. Thanks a lot, Jimmy. Okay, bud. Thank you. Well, we're ready to play baseball here at Comiskey Park in Chicago because this afternoon the Boston Red Sox lost to Oakland 6-3, to three, so that means the Blue Jays right now are four and a half back. Sean Hillegas with a record of one win, four losses, making his ninth start and tenth appearance of the season. And he has lost to California, Seattle, New York, and Boston. He beat Milwaukee 10-1. to one. And that game went seven innings, gave up four hits and one earned run. This is the first time he has ever faced the Toronto Blue Jays. And there's the lineup he'll be facing. For the Blue Jays, Junior Felix will lead off last night. He's got things started with that triple to right field. Tony Fernandez, big three-run homer in last night's game. will bat second. Kelly Gruber's in the third spot. George Bell in left field. Fred McGriff hit a homer to the opposite field, the left field off Bobby Thigpen in the ninth last night, his ninth of the year. Lloyd Mosby, three hits last night. He starts in center field. Ernie Witt, big hit off left-hander Steve Rosenberg, will be behind the plate. Rance Molnick still struggling right around 200. Lead the DH and Nelson Liriano will bat ninth and play second base. As far as the defense is concerned, a few changes from last night's lineup. Calderon will play left field tonight. He was in right field last night. Gallagher will stay in center field. Baines, who was the DH last night, making a rare start in right field. Williams, a third baseman. Guigent, an outstanding shortstop. 
Fred Manrique, the ex-Blue Jay, he's at second base. Ron Kittle at first, and Ron Karkovice doing the catching. The up-to-date standings with Boston losing this afternoon. You can see the Blue Jays in Detroit, both four and a half games back, and only five games in the loss column. As far as the West Division is concerned, the Chicago White Sox are nine and a half back of California. So Junior Felix steps into the batter's box, and we're ready to go. Junior Felix really works over that batter's box in the first bat of the ball game. Sooner or later, he's going to aggravate a pitcher, and he's going to look how far he's dug that hole, just barely inside the batter's box. All he's got to do is be touching that white line. Had a good rip at that first pitch from Hillegas. He hit the second pitch of the ball game for that triple last night. A great addition to this team. Just 21 years of age. Boy, oh boy, what a future he is. He slaps it to the shortstop. Guijan, a tough one. Oh, they'll never beat him. So Felix has a base hit. And that'll bring up the shortstop for the Blue Jays, Tony Fernandez. Tony Fernandez, did Eric King wake you up with that inside fastball in that game last night? Yeah, he did a little bit, you know. Uh, he just take little things like that to wake the uh, certain hitters up, and he certainly did wake me up last night. Uh, when I saw a pitcher, you know, any kind of pitcher throwing me inside like that, it just, I'm just get ready for that pitch. And you don't want to uh, see any hitter uh, to get ready for the inside pitch because anything can happen after that. He sure did wake up last night. He was in a terrible slump. And he finally hit a three-run homer down the right field line. And really, it turned the entire ball game around. Blue Jays were trailing 3-1, to one, and he gave the Jays a 4-3 to three lead. His pitch is a little high. One thing about Hillegas, he has given up 15 hits and 12 runs in the first inning. And this is his ninth start. Well, the Jays have continued that. Vein right there is Felix slapped the ball to shortstop and with that great speed beat it out. You know, talking about that pitch that King threw last night, it really wasn't that bad. It was just an inside fastball, but Fernandez was really alarmed that it came in so hard. It kind of surprised him, and boy, he turned it up a notch after that. He took some real aggressive swings. He stared out to the mound and really gave King what for. And then he played outstanding defense, made a nice diving stop on Eddie Williams, take away a hit from him. I think we noticed King was pitching in tight to just about everyone. There goes Felix. The throw by Karkovice. They got him. One of the strongest arms in the American League behind the plate tonight in Ron Karkovice. We've always raved about his defensive abilities. Watch how quickly he gets rid of this ball. Good footwork, very aggressively, and look at this thing, right on the money. Manrique takes the tag and applies it. Junior Felix out easily. What a great throw. John Hirschbeck made that call at second base. Karkovice now has thrown out 8 of 12. That'll give you an idea of the strength of his arm and the accuracy. Boy, he's got so many defensive abilities the problem has been that he's not been able to swing the bat until this year once again another look look at Manrique perfect position to take that throw real positive tag right there and Felix is out but what a strong arm on young Ron Karkovitz. catches the corner strikes him out that's one thing that Sammy Ellis, the pitching coach, will be pleased to see early in this ball game. He's been concerned about Hillegas being able to spot his fastball when he gets in a position to really finish off a hitter. And right then, he really painted the black on the outside with that good moving fastball. So that's a positive sign already. But Fernandez caught looking at a sinking fastball. First strike out of the game. A breaking ball for a strike to Kelly Gruber who homered in the seventh inning off Steve Rosenberg is for shot into the upper deck here at Comiskey. That pitch right there is really in between a slider and a curveball. It's kind of a slurve. It's not a sharp downward breaking curveball, and it's not really a short heart 
slider. It's in between. Big sweeping breaking pitch, but he has good command of it. The 0-2 pitch. Just misses the corner. Slap foul. So the Boston Red Sox losing this afternoon. The Blue Jays now just four and a half back. Five back in the lost column. So all of a sudden things are starting to tighten up a bit. So it's an important series for the Blue Jays. Because they'll go home Monday, play three against uh, Minnesota and then three more against Chicago. They're in the 12th inning in that Pittsburgh-Houston game. And it's still tied at four apiece. And we'll keep you up to date on that one. High fly ball, center field, Gallagher back, can't get to it. Gruber will try for three. There's going to be a close play at third. He's in there. To the deepest part of the ballpark, Kelly Gruber. The center fielder, Dave Gallagher, got caught off guard by the wind here. Gruber basically pops it up. Now watch how Gallagher's going straight back. The wind blowing from left to right catches the ball and takes it all the way away from him onto the warning track, away from the center fielder. He relays to Manrique. They have a shot at him, but Manrique kind of took a long time to get rid of it. He made a strong throw, but that little hesitation as we look at the flags on the top of that roof in left center. But Gallagher really got caught by that wind. The center fielder knew it was hit hard but he really took a poor angle to track it down. He went straight back towards the center field wall instead of anticipating the wind blowing that ball to right center. It really blew it away from him. Wind blowing across from left to right field. George Bell, he was one for four in last night's game. George will be looking for his 21st RBI of the season if he can drive home Kelly Gruber. You'll remember that they had some very extensive rain yesterday, and the outfield is still slow. It's still a very wet track out there, and Gallagher, once he made the wrong angle on the ball, didn't have the proper footing to really track it down with that speed. So the outfield play will be sluggish again tonight. Low and away, two balls and no strikes. Dale Ford, the home plate umpire, and look at that, 55 home runs at Comiskey Park. George Bell has 10 of them. He's only hit 11 career home runs off Chicago pitching. 10 of them right here. A couple of roof shots and one into the center field bleachers. Inside. Well, it's a hitter that Hillegas wants to be careful with. Well, he certainly doesn't want to groove one to George Bell, but he's got Fred McGriff on deck. And he, of course, is a left-handed banner, so Hillegas would much rather have the opportunity to pitch to the right-hander. And he makes a good pitch right there with a fastball. George normally has the green light, and I'm sure he had it there. Three and one. Bell draws a walk, so the Blue Jays have runners at the corner. Gruber down at third, George Bell at first, and the batter is Big Fred McGriff. McGriff, in his ninth home run of the season last night, a shot to left center field off of Bobby Thigpen, the ace reliever here for the White Sox. It came in the ninth inning. And that hit got his average back to 300. 26 RBIs. Player of the month in the American League, Fred McGriff for the month of April. It's interesting to watch Karkovice move around behind the plate. He's had the luxury of working with Jeff Torborg as we take a look at the home run leaders in the American League. Fred McGriff in second place behind the two leaders tied Lou Whitaker. What a start he's off to this year. In a home run in the ninth inning to beat Kansas City yesterday. So Hillegas has fallen behind two balls and no strikes to Fred McGriff. Remember in spring training, McGriff talked about 
his biggest goal this year. He wanted to hit 300. I don't think the coaches feel that way. They want him to drive the ball, try to get another 35, 40 home runs. Well, McGriff feels that if he has a good enough swing to hit 300, the home runs will come because he has the power. Cito Gaston has really been impressed with McGriff's patience at the plate. Right there, he went after a pretty tough pitch down and away from him. But last night against Bobby Thigpen with a 3-1 count on him, he got a high and away fastball that he drove into the seats in left field. He told me today he didn't think it was out of the ballpark. He said he didn't think he'd hit it high enough. But he hit it so hard. He gained elevation on the way out. <laughs> the 2-2 pitch inside and tight. Now Bell at first base will be running. Heligas looked like he was going to have an easy inning as he retired the first two batters after Felix had slapped an infield base hit. He was thrown out at second and then Tony Fernandez was caught looking at strike three. Bases are loaded for Lloyd Mosby. And Mosby, of course, had a big night last night with three hits. He was three for five. First time this season, I think, that he's had three hits in a ball game. Well, how about those Blue Jays from Hamilton, Ontario? All right. Where'd you meet that guy, Fergie? <laughs> you made that guy. Well. Where is he? <laughs> There's a lot of great Blue Jay fans that have driven down here. A couple of guys said they made it in eight hours from Toronto. Heligas is in a jam. He'd like to drive somewhere right now. Mosby hitting 142 with runners in scoring. Slaps that one foul into the upper deck. You know, as Mosby starts to climb towards that 200 mark, it's been a slow climb for sure. But boy, a hit right here could really boost his confidence. Bases loaded in two outs. If he could get a base hit and score two runs to give the Jays the early lead, that would be a big confidence booster. In on the handle. Puts that one up in the upper deck as well. So Mosby behind in the count, 0-2. He's got nine home runs against White Sox pitching. He's only hit two here. Steps back. what I referred to earlier when I was talking about Sammy Ellis the pitching coach when he mentioned Hillegas has had problems finishing off batters not making quality pitches when he's ahead as he is right now to Mosby one ball two strikes he's got to make a good pitch here a high hopper but it is foul had pretty good location on that one oops get back in that stance slipped out of there but Hillegas Really has to give the White Sox a quality start tonight. Go six or seven innings because they're a pitching weak ball club right now. They had a lengthy meeting this afternoon. Larry Himes, the GM, Jeff Torborg, the manager, Bart Johnson, their super scout, trying to resolve the problems. They certainly could use a good outing from the right-hander tonight. Inside, one of the moves they have made here today, they're going to send veteran left-hander Jerry Royce to the bullpen. Jeff Torborg has seen the club turn it around with the bats, and now he wants the arms to come through a little bit. Bases loaded. Two balls, two strikes to the shaker. Now Hilliger steps off. He wasn't quite sure of that pitch selection by Karkovice. He'll get another series of signs. Hit in the right field. Base hit. Here comes Gruber. Here comes Ben. And the Blue Jays lead it two to nothing as McGriff heads on into third. So Lloyd Mosby, a big single, a couple of RBIs. That's a big boost not only for Mosby, but for the Blue Jays because they have loaded the bases on two walks by Sean Hilligus. And then Mosby just pounds one through the infield. What a good swing right there by Ron Kittle, the first baseman, into right field. 
So the Jays jump out to an early lead as we have another look at Mosby's swing. And boy, that's a good sign right there to see Mosby really turning on that good fastball. So the first inning problems continue for Hillegas. Ernie Witt. He was one for three in last night's game. A couple of RBIs. And his hit came off left-hander Steve Rosenberg. The base is loaded. He I drove in a pair. You're having a good look at John McLaren down there. To see whether Mosby has the green light to run at first base. Hitter always likes to know what's going on with the base runner. Outside. You know, that pattern continues that we mentioned about Hillegas not being able to make a good quality pitch once he was ahead of Mosby the way he was. He had him 0-2 and, and just couldn't finish him off. Two balls and a strike. The White Sox acquired Hillegas from the Dodgers in September of last year for Ricky Horton. Bottom of the 12th inning, Houston and Pittsburgh. That game is still tied at four. That evens up the count at two balls and two strikes with two down. First inning, Blue Jays lead it two to nothing as John McLaren looks in. Now he might give Mosby the steal over there. Go ahead and run if you get a jump with the count two and two on Ernie Witt. Just go ahead and start Mosby, maybe create a hole in the infield for Witt. Kittle holding him on at first. Not going. And the pitch was low, but there goes Mosby. So a stolen base. Or actually, maybe wild pitch, I should say. Karkovice kept it in front of him, but an alert Lloyd Mosby was anticipating a ball getting away. He wants it up. He just doesn't get good position. He really caught a break when that went off umpire Dale Ford's arm. Kept it as close as it did. It might have saved the White Sox from a Griff's run down a third. So Karkovice didn't get down and blocked it, but the umpire helped him out a bit. All the same, Mosby went down the second on the wild pitch. Fouled back out of play. The Blue Jays are 11 and 14 against starting right-handers, 4 and 11 against left-handers. The Jays have won three out of four under Cito Gaston. I guess Jimmy Key doesn't mind this long wait, does he, Buck? Ah, uh, he'll wait forever as long as they're scoring runs. He'll go ahead and warm up again if it takes that. Just keep putting them up on the board, fellas. Inside, the bases are loaded again. That's the third walk in the inning. Surrendered by Hillegas. And he's pitching a bit defensively right now. Sammy Ellis, the pitching coach, is going to go out here and have a discussion with his young right-hander. You know, I had a talk with Ellis this afternoon. He says, you know, there are so many young pitchers in the major leagues now that don't have the experience of pitching 25 or 30 starts down in the minors where they can really fine-tune their pitching mechanics. They have to do it up here in the big leagues. And Unfortunately, we don't really have an awful lot of time or patience where we can really allow a guy to work things out in the major leagues. And it's really tough on young pitchers. Well, this has all happened with two down. Hillegas has thrown 35 pitches so far. Base is loaded. A Griff at third, Mosby at second, and Witt down at first. So now Hillegas has given up 18 hits, 14 runs in the first inning. And this being his ninth start of the season. Mullinex, the hitter. He was 0 for 1 last night. 
pretty good cut of the high fastball. But Ellis went out and had a discussion with the right-hander. Said you got to be more aggressive. Go right after these guys. Give yourself a little more confidence. Don't try to be so fine. That pitch is low. You know, you look back at Rance's numbers last year. He had a great first half. He had 328, eight home runs, 27 RBIs. Certainly a great first half for him. And this year, he is really struggling here in the first half. Hitting 198. Sort of a check swing to Williams, the third baseman, fires to Kittle for the third out. So the Blue Jays score a couple of runs on three hits and leave the bases loaded as we head to the bottom of the first. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Tender Jimmy Key making his 10th start. One of those four wins, he's got three complete games and a shutout. He won his last two starts, 3-2 over Seattle. That was a complete game. And 5-3 over Cleveland. Another complete game effort, a six, six hits and three earned runs. There's the lineup that he'll be facing tonight. Jeff Torborg mixes it up a little bit. Guijin leads it off. He'll play shortstop. Gallagher's in center field. Harold Baines moves out to the outfield. He plays defense in right field. Ronald Kittle over at first base. So that's cleanup. Ivan Calderon moves to left field. Fred Manrique, the former Blue Jay, moves into second base. Wayne Walker, Greg Walker, will be the DH. He'll bat seventh. Eddie Williams over at third will bat eighth. And the catcher is Ron Karkovice. Ozzie Jen, it looks like the White Sox have a different attitude this year. What do you think that is causing that? Well, you know, I've been playing here for five years, and I, I think I'm the luckiest man in baseball. I play for three good managers. I think I play for Tony La Russa, for Gossi, now I play for Jeff. It's the best three managers I've ever played in my life. But, you know, the different attitude, you know, they got to let the guys play, and they got to try to do the best they can. You know, we're not talking about rumors. Trey and manager got fired and a lot of rumors that they go out and do the best at them. Walt Riniak is a big difference this team right now because he likes to work. He, he wants to be at the best, best we can beat every pitch. We talk about, before we talk about every game, every bat, he want to be the best he can be in every pitch. Is that the different attitude we got right now? Every pitch we take in service, every pitch is count for us. And uh, I think what's the difference this year and every year I play, I play here. Fires the defense. Bell, Mosby, Felix in the outfield. Gruber, Fernandez, Luriano, McGriff, and Witt behind the plate. Here's the first pitch delivered by Key. It goes for a ball. Gijen feels that Walter Reniak has brought the belief that these guys can hit and score runs. So far, the hitters have believed. There's a butt foul, but the pitchers generally have the hitters trying to catch up. So they fixed the hitting part, at least to this point. Now they need to work on the pitching staff a bit. But Asagi Jin certainly has benefited from it. His average up to 273. He had three hits in last night's game. He's fourth in the American League in base hits. He's in some pretty good companies. He tries to lay down another one. Reynolds from Seattle, the leader, along with Carney Lansford. Then Kirby Puckett with 51, two behind Reynolds and Lansford, and Guijin with 50. Strikes him out. Good location right there by Jimmy Key. He went down and away with that running fastball, just running away from the left-handed batter. Watch the movement on this ball. Down and away, that's just a cut fastball, and he'll sail away from a left-handed batter from time to time. Jimmy Key, 28 years old. Hard to believe that he's been around that long. Dave Gallagher. And an RBI and a base hit. Houston beat Pittsburgh 5-4. to four. And that was in the 12th inning. Boy, that National League division over there with Cincinnati, San Francisco, San Diego, Houston, the Dodgers, everybody's bunched up right there. Atlanta's only three games under 500 in last place. Ground ball to Fernandez. Two down. One thing that has really been impressive about Jimmy Key, I think, he's only allowed two walks in his last five starts, covering 40 in the third inning. And that's what the game of pitching is all about. Walks will kill you, so he has allowed just two. 
We've always talked about how we like to see the pitchers pitch ahead. Boy, that's testimony to it right there. When Key's ahead, he can really do some work, and he's got his work cut out for him right now with Harold Baines. Leading hitter in the American League at 364. You have to go back to April the 19th. See where Jimmy Key lost his last game. That was to the Yankees. Catch Boy, that's corner. a couple of pitches on the corner right there. Bain just saying, hey, man, if he's going to be like that all night long, we can pack it up right now. That's Dale Ford behind home plate. Look at Terry Steinbach. Really contributing to that Oakland offense with Jose Conseco out of the lineup. He hit a home run today. Ground ball. Fernandez. Wide range of throw. Oh, what a play by Tony Fernandez. So Fernandez, key in the Blue Jays. Three up, three down. And after one here at Comiskey Park in Chicago, the Blue Jays lead it two to nothing. You're watching LeBats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. What adjustments do you make playing on a grass infield like the one here at Comiskey Park? Well, I know that uh, I have to uh, charge the ball a little bit quicker because uh, the grass is slower. And uh, also, you know, for me, like going to hole to get, get your ground ball, I know I can measure my distance better in here, natural grass, than in the artificial turf for some reason. I don't know why. Well, what he told me was he likes the contrast of being able to see the grass and then the dirt, and that gives him a good yardstick to tell where he is in relationship to the field. That doesn't happen on AstroTurf. So he says he likes playing on this field. Nelson Liriano, he lays down a buck. He's got a shot. He's safe. Nobody at first. Of course, you've got the inexperienced Ron Kittle playing first base. Well, Kittle did the right thing there. He went for the ball once it was by the pitcher. That's his assignment. The pitcher's got to hustle over to first base. Once it goes by Hillegas right here, he's got to continue on the first base. But Kittle will make the play, and then Hillegas just gives up, knows he can't catch up to Liriano. Just a perfect bunt. That's the object of that play right there. you got to drag it by the pitcher, make either the first baseman or the second baseman field it. Now the top of the Blue Jay order, Junior Felix. He slapped one of the shortstop, Ozzy Guijan, in the first, got a base hit, and then was caught stealing second by Ron Karkovic. Williams in on the grass down the third base line. Pitches inside. Larry Barnett, the crew chief, down there. Third base. He worked behind the plate last night. Look at the defense. Eddie Williams in on the grass. Trying to take the bunt away from Felix. Looks as though that Hillegas went in between innings and got some instruction from Sammy Ellis about pitching inside. First two pitches to Felix here. We're inside. So Hillegas is behind once again with Liriano taking his lead at first base. Felix hitting 269 for the Blue Jays. There goes Liriano, the throw by Cockervice. It's high. Oh, they got him. Liriano slowed down, and he actually slid and slowed himself down. I think he was there and could have beat the throw. Watch how he slows down once he slides. He checks now, and he really didn't carry his momentum to the bag. Manrique alertly put the tag down quickly. But Liriano kind of held up right here at the end. Look how he's sliding too short instead of sliding hard into the bag. He should have beat this throw to second base. But he really had a poor slide. Watch how quick Manrique gets the glove down. Good tag by the second baseman. Ground ball hit down to Kittle. Two down. That throw by Karkovice really wasn't that good, but he got it down there quickly. It was high. And because Liriano really decelerated as he hit that ground, 9 of 13, that's getting it done. Boy, Jim Fergosi, when he was the manager here last year, said, boy, if Karkovice could hit 220, he'd play every day because his defensive abilities are so strong. Right now he's up to 254, and they love him even more. Hernandez pops that one back out of play. Karkovice will have no chance. So 
So Karkovic threw out Felix in the first inning and gets Luriano here. Felix really hasn't had any luck stealing bases so far. He's been caught twice and only has one stolen base. But potentially, he'll steal 50. Give him time. Oh, he's got or to more. get around the league. Get an idea how to read pitchers a little better. It'll take him a year or two. The 1-1 one -one pitch to Tony. A little high. Melito Perez at two and four will go against John Cerruti tomorrow. John is 0 and 2. Fly ball, left center field, Gallagher. The wind is a little tricky out there, isn't it? It drove it back towards center field, but this time Gallagher anticipated. Hilligas gets out of a, the inning without much trouble here in the second. Blue Jays lead it two to nothing. You're watching Lobats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. What managers that you should play every day, and it took a break for you to get in the lineup here when Dan, in Dan Pasqua got injured. Well, I think that was my only opportunity because I spoke with Jeff earlier, and he said, uh, you're going to have to wait around for something to happen, and uh, it happened the first day. Danny broke his wrist. I've been playing ever since, and uh, I think it's a good opportunity for me because for the last three years, I've been a platoon player, and it's been tough for me, but I enjoy it, but right now I'm enjoying this a little bit more. Well, Kittle only played in 75 games last year, hit 18 home runs, drove in 43, and already he's hit seven this year and has driven in 26. And we're just into the second month this season. He's capable of putting a lot of home runs up there. I chopper to Gruber to get Kittle. So Key has set down four in a row. And that'll bring up the left fielder, Ivan Calderon. And what have we got here? Having a nice time today? <laughs> Pressure's really on him, isn't it? Fun at the old ball yard. Stay in the sun. High fly ball. Felix, a long way to go. Can he get there? He slows down. He had a shot at it. Well, this is a thing for a youngster like Felix playing in these ballparks for the first time. He doesn't have a feel for just how far he has to run. He can go over to the warning track, but he doesn't know how far that fence is away from him because he hasn't been here that often. It's only his second game in Kaminsky Park, and he simply shied away. He didn't know how far he had to go. I just got to chalk that one up to the fact that he hasn't had an awful lot of games here and is really not that familiar with the surroundings. Even though you have batting practice to check things like that, it's just really a matter of getting into a game situation where you run, 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 and you don't have a feel for how far that padding is away. Calderon on a 12-game hitting streak. It's a ball and a strike. Took something off that fastball. Calderon turned around and asked Dale Ford if that was in the strike zone. Pretty good numbers for the left fielder. Calderon, 291, 6 and 27. That ball really had some spin on. Came back and caught him on the left hand as that hand was on the bat. Getting pretty good. Watch, it's fouled into the dirt, and then it just comes up immediately and catches him on his left hand. He couldn't believe that. Ouch. You know, these White Sox need starting pitching. The Blue Jays have lots of that here and in the minor leagues. And a guy like Calderon would fit nicely as the D.H. Well, or even the left fielder. And they're looking for some right-handed yep. pop, somebody from the right side to provide some power. And this guy might be one of those guys they would consider. He's had shoulder problems, though, in the past. Slaps that one just foul. Larry Barnett called it down the third baseline. Looked like Barnett really was waiting for that ball to hook foul because he had his hands up in the air and right at the end he said yeah that's a foul ball but Calderon had surgery last year to repair some ligament damage in his shoulder says hey he feels great He's only 27 years old from Puerto Rico 
I think he's one of the more aggressive hitters in the league, don't you? He always has been a very free swinger, but what has happened since Reniak has come over here, he's decided he doesn't have to pull the ball all the time. He really cut down the swing. Made some pretty good contact. That's a reason that his average is up to 291. In the past, you know, it was either home run or punch out. Maybe pop a ball up on the infield, but we saw it last night when he came up with that solid single to left field. Took a nice, easy swing and just went with the pitch. So Reniak's tutoring is paying off for the big left fielder. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Ground ball to Groover. Down on one knee, makes the play. And McGriff, oh, nice stop over there at first to get Calderon. Well, Groover got caught with that in-between hop and really had to go down to his knees just to glove it. But that strong arm really pays off. It's in the dirt, but he has enough on it that it skips pretty good for McGriff. Hits way out on the grass, and McGriff really stays with it nicely. Two down as Key has set down five in a row, and here's the ex-Blue Jay, Fred Manrique. He's off to a pretty good start, isn't he? 368, it's hot. This is only the 18th game that he's appeared in. Breaking ball, it's a little low. Got 14 hits and 12 RBIs. That's making pretty good use of those base hits. He told me yesterday, he said, I can't believe that I'm not playing against the Blue Jays. That shows you what Reniak's done for this offense of the White Sox. 277 team average. Base what hit, right field. Past the outstretched glove of McGriff. That's the first hit off Jimmy Key. Well, that'll put a smile on Reniak's face over in the dugout as McGriff really goes after a pitch on the outside part of the plate. Good moving fastball away from him, and he just laced it. Look at Reniak talking all the time, teaching all the time. Right after Calderon made it out, he went out and talked to Calderon. Watch the swing here. Watch his head, how he stays on the ball. Good extension. He goes into it. That's a picture-perfect swing right there. Now Greg Walker, the DH. He just came off the DL four days ago, and he's two for nine. Pair of doubles. Walker, one of the senior members of this White Sox club. Generally a fixture over there at first base, but being on the DL, now he's got to work his way back in the lineup. Ground by Groover, diving stab, the force to Liriano at second. What a play by Kelly Groover. Groover with that great athletic ability, ranges to his left and takes away a potential base hit. Watch as he dives for it, takes it down. Now from his knees will fire a strike to Lariano to force Manrique at second base. Through two here at Comiskey. The Blue Jays lead it two to nothing. You're watching LeBats. Blue Jays baseball on TSN. The telecast is presented by authority the Toronto Blue Jays and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of the Toronto Blue Jays. We go to the third inning here at Comiskey in Chicago. Jays lead it two to nothing. Kelly Gruber who made that great play to end the second, we'll lead it off. Gruber with two down in the first, tripled to right center, and he pops this one up in the infield. Karkovice, the catcher, is calling for it. Karkovice made a move before he really located that ball. You can see that he's looking up in the sky, and because we're playing so early here in Chicago, he looked up there and really couldn't find the ball. It's really a high sky not a cloud in the sky as that wind from the northwest has blown the clouds out of here but he got underneath it a little bit too far but he still made the play that's what counts in the end George Bell who walked and scored in the first Wasn't that close? No, it wasn't. That shows me that Bell was thinking outside. There we are. Extra innings, Bergie and Buck. <laughs> now we finally well, get a get good guest now. on the show, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask us who the new manager is going to be, although Terry Bevington's getting a little warmer. A drive to deep center field. Gallagher back off his glove. And Bell will head 
grabbed a second. So George Bell will have a double. Gallagher almost made a great play. Well, once again, that win caught him because he didn't allow for the drift. It was hit on the line as opposed to the way Gruber hit that ball out there earlier. Bell really goes after it and really drives it to center. Now Gallagher's drifting right at the end, and that ball just blows away from him. Just goes off the little finger of his glove. He's a pretty good outfielder. He is a good outfielder, but that wind is really able to catch it. causing him problems. That wind is blowing over the top of the roof in left center over towards the right field corner. Ready, McGriff. High fly ball, left field. It's not that deep as Calderon comes over. He's got it. Bell will stay at second. Two down. Look at Bell laughing at Calderon. <laughs> now he's hollering at him. Hey, what are you doing out there? Calderon says, go ahead, run. I'll throw you out. I can't believe he threw that good, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Calderon flicks his arm at him. Al Mosby, who had a single and a couple of RBIs. Blue Jays leading this one two to nothing. You know, the White Sox won seven out of 12 against Toronto last year. It was the first time since 82 that Chicago had won a season series. And the Blue Jays were one and five in this stadium, which is hard to believe last season. And I believe that this particular team this year is a better team than they had last year, but they're certainly having some pitching woes so far this year. Their team ERA is 467. Ground ball. Off the glove of Guijan. Bell will come around to score. The Blue Jays lead it three to nothing. And Mosby has all three runs batted in. Big two out single in the first. Now Guillen has good position right here, but the ball takes a funny hop on him and just catches his glove. He wouldn't have gotten Mosby at first, but he would have saved a run. He might have kept Bell at third base, but Lloyd Mosby, two for two tonight on the heels of a three-hit performance last night. The Shaker now has 12 RBIs on the season as Ernie Witt gets set in the batter's box. You know, the club leader is Fred McGriff, and uh, he's only got 26. Inside corner for a strike. Boy, that could be a welcome sight indeed to see Lloyd Mosby come around with a bat a bit. Five hits so far in this series. Karkovice setting up inside. Fly ball. Right center field, Baines coming over, he can't get to it, it drops in, and Mosby's going to score all the way from first base, it's 4-0 for, for the Jays. And Harold Baines, who's had two knee operations, simply did not have the speed to get there. Well, you can see the sh sun shining on his face, because it's an early start here, that sun is really tough out there in right field, it's right in his eyes. He saw the swing at the plate by Witt, and it really wasn't hit that hard. I think it kind of froze him, the fact that it goes kind of off the bat. It's kind of a looping fly ball to right field, but you can look up into that sky and see how tough it is for the outfielders to pick it up. Baines fighting that sun, never really got to it. Now Gallagher slides over, but all this while, Lloyd Mosby is chugging hard and comes all the way around from first base to score the fourth Blue Jays run. And Baines was just flexing that right knee of his out there in right field. Now Mullenix, who grounded out with the bases loaded to end the first inning. Boy, four runs and seven hits already. With Jimmy Key on the mound, I'd say your chances look pretty good. You would think so. And we've seen stranger things happen this year, haven't we? <laughs> you know, we have seen it all so far this year. But I like the Jays' chances so far, four to nothing. Just in the top of the third inning. And the fact that Mosby's two for two with three RBIs. And had three hits last night. On the outside part of the plate, 
for a strike. Two and one to Mullinix. This is the guy the Blue Jays need to get on track. Rance Mullinix. Chased a high fastball there. Just not really himself at the plate. Going out of his strength, really battling himself a bit more than he'll admit to right now, but he's had so much success at the plate over the years that it's been a tough struggle for him. Falls into the upper deck out of play. I tell you, he's done just about everything you could imagine to try to figure out what's causing his problems. He's choked up on the bat. He's tried different bats, different stances. And he always goes back to the basics. Good mechanical approach. Held up on that breaking pitch. They looked down to Larry Barnett, and he said no. Well, with two outs and a full count on Molnix, Whip will be off with the pitch. That'll cause the infield to have to go across the infield to first base on a ground ball. You can see the infield is back and deep. Whip with a big lead uncontested at first. Ground ball to Guijan, the shortstop to Kittle for the third out. So the Blue Jays score two more here in the third inning and lead it four to nothing. You're watching LeBats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Blue Jay lead over the Chicago White Sox. Jimmy Key has given up just one hit, a second inning single to ex Blue Jay Fred Manrique. Eddie Williams, Ron Karkovice, and Ozzie Guijan here in the third inning will face the left hander. Williams had a base hit in last night's ball game, hitting 364 over the past five games. And he looks like He's here to stay as far as third base is concerned for Chicago. A position they've had lots of trouble with over the past few years. Well, you know, they had Steve Lyons at third base last year. They tried Kenny Williams, an outfielder, over at third base. And they went to Cleveland and got this young man. Remember, it wasn't too long ago that Mike... Oh, what a play by Gruber! Oh! That ball looked like it was already past him, but... We saw... Gruber make a couple of errors last night, one fielding and one throwing. But boy, he's on his game tonight. That ball really was a tricky hop. Watch how the ball almost goes by Gruber. He goes in the hole and now just flags it down as it was almost by him. Once he gets the ball in his hands, that strong arm takes over and it's no contest. Nice defensive play by the Blue Jays' third baseman. The catcher, Ron Karkovice. Breaking ball for a strike from Jimmy Key. Karkovice got a hit in last night's game, a double, and it was a pretty good at bat off Mike Flanagan as he hits a fly ball to right field. Felix with the glasses down, back, back. He's got it. Oh, Junior Felix makes a great play out there in right field. Boy, he battled that one, didn't he? Well, he had the sun and the wind and everything. Slow track, all that wet turf out there causing some problems. But boy, he stays with it. You can see he just flips the glasses down. Now that ball is drifting away from him, and he really does a nice job to concentrate, watch the ball into his glove, and make a fine catch. So we've seen some adventurous plays in the outfield so far tonight. Gallagher's had some problems with the win. Baines lost the ball out there. Well, Key has one strikeout, and it's Ozzie Guijani got him in the first inning, but here's a ground ball to Liriano. Three up, three down, and through three, the Blue Jays are leading four to nothing here at Comiskey Park in Chicago. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now let's go to this TSN sports update. Nothing. The Blue Jays leading the Chicago White Sox fourth inning. And it'll be Nelson Liriano leading it off for Toronto. Felix and Fernandez. You know, we're seeing the Blue Jays play the type of baseball that we all expected to see when they left Florida after that great spring they had where they won 22 games and then they really got off to a slow start. But this is the type of baseball that we expected them to play. It's a fact. White Sox have only one player lead the AL in season hitting. Luke Apwin, 1936 and 1943. 
Remember that old timers game, wasn't it, Luke, that uh, hit that home run? He can still hit. At yes, 75, right. he hit one out. I think the game was in Washington, that's I don't know, right. four yeah. or five years ago. Liriano laid down a beautiful bunt back in the second inning. And he's going to keep them on their toes again. He Not shows even. bunt again, and what that does is that creates uh, the infield to be a little bit closer towards the plate. You look at Williams at third base, Gage in at short, Manrique at second. They all take a step or two in. That might buy Lariano a little infield angle. Yeah, he did, says Dale Ford. He didn't get it back in time. Was Hilligus got that breaking pitch down in the dirt, and Lariano went after it. You know, Buck, you said that we're starting to see the baseball now that uh, we expected out of the Blue Jays. Well, really, it started in that Cleveland series. They won two out of three under uh, Cito Gaston. And for whatever reason, he's got them hustling, got them hitting. He's got them doing all the right things at the right time. Two balls and two strikes to Liriano. Base hit up the middle. The Labatt's player of the game for Toronto will receive something new under the sun. Cannon's new Prima Shot, the world's first automatic camera with detachable infrared remote control. Compact with the latest technology and the remarkable removable remote control. As well, an amateur baseball team will be the guest of Cannon at a Futures Blue, Ga Blue Jays game. Once again, Hillegas gets in a situation two and two on Liriano and throws one right down the middle. Hey, that'll drive a pitching coach and a manager crazy, but he's really not finishing up. He's getting the count in his favor, but he's really not making that quality pitch to retire the hitter. Off the hand, a little pop-up in the infield. They let it drop. Gijen always alert, Felix will always stay at first. Felix will stay at first. Watch now. He knows what the situation is. He slips a little bit. Now he's going to check the runner and see if he's running. Look at that. He knew what he was doing all along. Steps on the back for the force out. So the play is Felix, fielder's choice. He's on first base. Liriano, the base runner, is forced at second. But I tell you, that Ozzy Gijen always trying to create something, take advantage of maybe a mental lapse. Now Jeff Torborg is going to go out and have a discussion about this. What Guillen is saying that what, what has happened I think that Greg Cost told Felix to get back out there and the pitcher or uh, Guillen threw to Kittle and Kittle had Liriano off the base tagged him and then tagged uh, Felix and what the White Sox are saying there should be two down because Liriano Time hadn't been called that's right. But Liriano was retired on the force out. So he's academic. Felix is the runner. And I don't know if they really had an advantage or not. Well, they made play. a mistake on that one. Didn't work out the way they expected. What he was hoping for was Felix not running down the first baseline. And that ball, when it hit out there by second base, it really took a funny hop, didn't it? He and really he had to barehand it. Yep. He was fortunate. Bijan was. Could have had egg on his face if that thing goes into left field, huh? <laughs> that pitch is outside to Tony. So it's two balls and no strikes. Really studying the signs from Johnny McLaren. Be a good time to gamble. Fernandez really ahead in the count. Two balls, no strikes. Great speed at first base, and Felix not going. Pop the That's popped up. Bijan is going to try it again. No, not this time. Ah, he'll catch this one. I noticed the last four or five games, Fernandez had a lot of trouble at the plate. Although he did hit that home run uh, last night, but he has popped the ball up a lot. 
swinging under the ball a little bit and he's been really concentrating hitting off the tee trying to get that downward plane on his bat where he really gets on top of the ball and he hasn't been able to do that now he's two for 22 I believe really been struggling Kelly Gruber Gruber tripled in the first inning and scored and popped up in the third. Felix, there he goes. The throw by Karkovice. The ball hits Felix and rolls out into shallow left field, but Felix will stay at second. Karkovice really had a tough pitch to handle for the throw, and he never got his body in a good throwing position. That's the reason the ball tailed off away from second base. It's a breaking pitch, and he never really got turned around. Watch how the ball trails into the runner. He just throws a running ball. He didn't get on top of it with that good rotation to finish up. We saw him throw two great throws where he had real good arm action and that ball carried straight to second base. That time he never got on top of it and it carried into the runner. Three balls and no strikes to Gruber with George Bell in the on deck circle. Four to nothing, Toronto leading. Chopped in front of the plate, Karkovic, uh, Vice throws him out. It was a fair ball. So left stranded, down at second was Junior Felix. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. It is still four to nothing for Toronto. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Here. You didn't get a shot in the big leagues till you were 27. And two words that really bugs you, you kept hearing in the minors, potential and tools. What caused you the problems about those two words? Well, I, I've always said that potential is a, is a word that I, I hate. I can't stand the word because I've never had any potential. And uh, tools is something I've never had either, and, uh, at least in everybody's eyes. And, uh, it's an unfair word, potential. Uh, for the guys that do have a potential or tools, it's unfair because people are constantly expecting them to do more than maybe they're actually capable of. And uh, I'm sure that it puts added pressure on them. Uh, for me, coming, coming through the minor leagues, it always seemed to be everyone else having potential and being protected on major league rosters and and uh, me constantly having to prove myself year in and year out uh, but getting a shot at 27 years old is fantastic what's, what's even more amazing is that this year I'm only 26 <laughs> an interesting study in perseverance eight years in the minors before he made it to Cleveland and back in 87 but the last year really made a splash hitting 303 and he's off to a great start here batting 301 and at his present time, he's the only player in the Chicago lineup who has started every game. A ground ball to Liriano. Another little streak going for uh, Jimmy Key. Five in a row he has set down. Stay tuned at the end of the game for the TSN turning point. Brought to you by Converse. The batter is the leading hitter in the American League. Right fielder Harold Baines. Boy, Key's made some real tough pitches to Harold Baines tonight. Big sweeping breaking pitch there down and away from him. He has good command of all of his pitches tonight. Baines was out on the ground ball to shortstop his first time up. You can see Baines' face bathed in sunshine. That's a bit of a distraction for a hitter. We've seen that in Exhibition Stadium in these early ball games when the Sun settles down in that corner in left field. Another big breaking pitch that he swings and misses. But you know, it's you've all sat there with the light shining on the side of your face, how it distracts you, and you can see how it's shining through those openings up in the. Well, here's a look at it right there. You remember back in the All Star game here in Chicago in '83, that caused Carew some problems. A little tapper foul. We won't have to worry about that in the sky dome. Oh, I can hardly wait till that place opens. So it'll be wonderful to get out of Exhibition Stadium. I mean, the cold weather that we've had there this past month, oh, miserable. Really exemplified why they should have a covered stadium. I think it's great that they have a retractable roof on it. A ball and two strikes. Just a little inside. 
But I mentioned that 83 All-Star game played here basically at the same time of the evening. Carew was playing first base when Steve, the starting pitcher, threw a comeback over to Carew, and he never really saw it. Got away from him. Fly ball, left field. Bell started in, now goes back a couple of steps. Two down. That's only the second ball hit to the outfield. Carco Vice flied out to Felix in right. And now Baines lifts a lazy fly to left field. So Key's got that sinking fastball working. He hasn't walked anybody and he has struck out one. By the way, Jimmy Key will be the opening day pitcher in the Sky Dome against Milwaukee. His regular turn falls on that day. Ron Kettle grounded out in the second inning to Kelly Gruber. You remember the great year that Kittle had in his rookie season. Deep right field, right center, home run, Ron Kittle. His eighth home run of the season. Anything hit from left center over towards the right field line will be helped by that wind blowing briskly across the outfield. We saw Gallagher chasing a couple of fly balls. And now Kittle launches one up into that jet stream, and it blows right out of here. He hit it hard, but it was certainly boosted by the wind. Watch how he goes out after it. Down, out over the middle of the plate. Key's nose is hit hard. You can see he gave up on it. Mosby giving chase, but right here he just has to check up, see if it comes off the fence. He's hoping for it to come off the fence, but it won't do it. So Kittle's eighth home run of the year has the White Sox on the board. The tail of the tape, 422 feet for Ron Kittle. It's a four to one ball game. And that is just the second hit off Jimmy Key. Manrique singled back in the second. Okay, you've got to really be on top of your game to keep the White Sox off the scoreboard with this offense. Chicago leads the American League in hitting. Line drive to left field. Drops in for a base hit for Calderon with two down. That's the thing that Jeff Torborg explained to me yesterday, the fact that this ball club has a lot of spunk. They're down by four runs, now three on Kittle's home run, and then Calderon comes up with an RBI, or excuse me, a two-out base hit to left field. So the White Sox believe they can come back from any deficit. They've got the bats to do it. They've got their work cut out for him facing the tough left-hander in Jimmy Key. Manrique's the batter. He singled to right for the first hit of the ball game and raised his lofty average even higher. Came into the game batting 368. That pitch is low and inside. The thing that I'm so impressed about with these White Sox hitters is the way they're so patient and deliberate at the plate. Manrique really looks relaxed and confident there at the plate. We've seen him in the past, of course. He was a member of the Blue Jays, and he was always a bit impatient at the plate. But watch how he really approaches it nice and smooth. There's no panic in that batting style. He's got confidence in his ability to take a pitch take a pitch until he sees one that he really wants to hit. He signed his first pro contract with Toronto back in 78 and made his major league debut with the Blue Jays in 81. He even had a good cut at that pitch. It's a good breaking ball from Key, but Manrique really stayed right on it. A ball and two strikes with two down here in the fourth inning. Ron Kittle has just hit his eighth home run. Change up that misses by quite a bit. You know, we talk about the Reniac style of hitting. He likes those batters to go out over the plate and really extend that front arm. The way to defense that if you're a pitcher is to crowd him with that good fastball. There's a look at the hitting instructor. Always hollering encouragement to his batters. This tough foul. 
But the way you pitch to a team like this when they have a style like the White Sox, the Red Sox had it in Boston under Reniac where they go out over the plate, really extend those arms, because you got to pound them. you got to show them that you can throw that fastball on the inner half of the plate. One of Key's strengths over the years has been the fact that he can really run that fastball in on the right-handers. But it's especially important when you've got a team like the White Sox who are aggressive, they use the whole field, and they'll go out after that pitch over the plate. Ground ball off the glove of Key, but Liriano will have a play. They get Manrique for the third out, but not before Ron Kittle. It's a home run, and it is now 4-1, to one, Toronto leading. You're watching LeBats, Blue Jays baseball on TSN. A 4-1 to one lead for the Blue Jays. Fifth inning here at Comiskey Park in Chicago. It'll be George Bell, Fred McGriff, Lloyd Mosby. They had just over 11,000 last night. And a much better crowd today. At least it appears as if it is. In case you joined us late, the first base coach for the Chicago White Sox, Terry Bevington, was late in arriving to the ballpark. And Bevington, uh, we are told, had another interview with Blue Jay management this afternoon. As the Blue Jays continue their search for a new manager. So for George Bell, his next hit, there's Bevington. Obviously, the Blue Jays had enough interest to ask for a second interview. Stay tuned, folks. Something's going to happen soon. When Pat Gillick had the press conference, he announced today within a week or 10 days, he felt they would be able to fill the position of manager. Bevington's only 32 years old. He won't be 33 until July the 7th. This is his first year in the major leagues. As a minor league manager, he won his division five in the last eight years. Buck, you had him on the show last night with us. You know, Gillick had some criteria. He wanted a player that had played within the last five years or managed within the last five years or had coached within the last five years. I guess Bevington's coaching this year fits those criteria. But he hasn't had any major league experience prior to this season. And what experience he's had is right here with the White Sox. And who knows if they re-interviewed this man, Terry Bevington, today, they might have interviewed a couple of others as well. A ground ball to Eddie Williams, the third baseman. George Bell is out. The big question is, where in the world are Pat Gillick and Paul Beeston conducting these interviews? Certainly not in our not hotel. Not in our hotel. <laughs> They're around somewhere. Well, it's a tough job that they've got. And the way the club is playing right now, it's not going to be easy for whoever takes over. If they keep playing like this, it'll be real easy. <laughs> Let me enter my name if they keep playing like this. They'll end up being the manager of the year. <laughs> that evens up the count to Fred McGriff at one and one. Fred walked in the first inning and then flied out in the third. High fly ball, center field. The wind will not get a hold of this one as Gallagher comes in, makes the catch. Two down. You know, Bevington's got to feel pretty good, though, uh, the fact that he was asked back for a second interview, and here's the guy who is spending his first year in the major leagues as a first base coach. And you know what this will do is it'll give him credibility, and his name will pop up with each managerial replacement going on because they say, oh, yeah, what about Bevington over there with the White Sox, even if he shouldn't get this Blue Jays job? Once you get into that fraternity, May 20th, 1985, the Jays took over first place for the rest of the year. Well, that was a great year, wasn't it, Ferg? Did you enjoy that oh, year? Fabulous. No, I no, it wasn't a good year. <laughs> <laughs> Sensational year. Was that the year that made How About Those Blue Jays famous? 
No, it might have been. <laughs> I started that a long time ago. Ball and two strikes to Mosby. Mosby has got his average up to 206. Well, he's got to be excited about that. Two for two, three runs batted in in this game. You know what happens when you start adding those multiple hit games up, you gain more confidence with each at bat. You know, be three hits last night, two hits tonight. The way he finished up last year, though, he only had seven runs batted in the last 37 games and hit just 239, 42 RBIs the whole year. As Manrique fires across for the third out to Ron Kittle. So we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, and the Blue Jays lead by three here at Comiskey Park in Chicago. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Some more Blue Jay fans here at Comiskey Park. Oh, hang on to that, pal. <laughs> Looks like he's going to even. <laughs> it's good to see the Blue Jay fans here in Chicago. As the Boston Red Sox lost this afternoon 6-3 to three to Oakland. So going into the night's game, the Jays just four and a half back. And should they hang on and win this one, they'll be four games back. Can you believe that? Oh, it is hard to believe. <laughs> They're 10 games under 500. They're just five games back in the loss column. Fly ball. One down. Greg Walker that hit that. And that'll bring up the third baseman, Eddie Williams. Came out in a taxi with Jimmy Key today, and he was telling me about the new home that he bought in Toronto. Right next to a golf course. Yeah. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> but I think uh, Dave Steve is the only other Blue Jay that has purchased a home in Toronto. Well, it's good to see a situation where Key can come up and do some work in the wintertime, possibly stay at that place, establish himself in the community. Of course, Cito Gaston has a home in Toronto. You always seem to forget about the manager. And I think probably Denise is there right now watching the game. She's got to be awfully proud of her husband. Yep. And, uh, everybody that knows Cito is really pleased for the way the ball club has responded since he's taken over. I like that, Ferg, too. You've left off the interim tonight. That's good. He's the manager. They've talked about, well, he's the interim manager. We're going to find a permanent replacement. Just missed outside of that sinking fastball. If I'm not mistaken, Buck, this is the first 3 1 count that he has had in this ballgame. <laughs> Scatters the dugout of the Chicago White Sox with that ground ball. The end moves Cole quickly Isaac. in the dugout, even. Don't get their attention over there. But he's quite a character, isn't he? Oh, he's a great kid. I love to talk to him. He loves to play baseball. Ground ball, Lariano. Two down. That'll bring up the number nine hitter in the Chicago lineup, the catcher, Ron Karkovic. Karkovic flew out to Junior Felix. Up against the wall in right field back in the third inning. Felix really made a fine catch. We talked about how you pitch to a team under Walt Reniak's guidance, and that's it right there. You throw that fastball in on their hands, it doesn't allow them to get that extension that they like to get out over the plate. The entire principle of Reniac's instruction is that you have to get extension. Go out and get that ball. You can see his stride is towards home plate. It's all a positive, aggressive theory. Step towards the ball, hit the ball out in front, and get that extension with your front hand. Reniac was under a lot of criticism in Boston. Of course, he had a couple of big shadows cast over there by Ted Williams and Carl Yastrzemski, two great 
Hall of Famers. Reniak, of course, didn't enjoy a great major league career, but he certainly has had success as a hitting instructor. Fly ball, shallow left center. Bell won't get to it, neither will Mosby, and Kakavice has a long single. We were talking before the game, if Reniak can get this guy to hit, he can get anybody to hit. And Karkovai certainly has responded. Watch this swing right here. Ball's away from him. Good extension. His head stayed down on it. The hand comes off the bat. Bell does a good job to keep Karkovai at first base as he tracks it down and retrieves it back to the infield. It's only the fourth hit off Jimmy Key. You look at some of Karkovai's numbers. Last year, the White Sox won 74. The year before, 071. And then he hit a robust 183 in Hawaii. He played bingo that one year. <laughs> 0 71. Don't forget the Minnesota Twins. Monday, May the 22nd. That's Victoria Day holiday. A 135 start. Lots of tickets remaining through Tuesday and Wednesday. Two down, fifth inning, Toronto leading four to one here at Comiskey Park in Chicago. That was just the fourth hit off of Jimmy Key. Manrique a single, Ron Kittle a home run, and singles to Calderon and Karkovice. A ball and a strike to Ozzie Guijan. Guijan is a free swinger. He's only walked seven times in almost 200 at bats. Punches that over the head of Gruber. Drops in for a base hit. Bell will come in. And Karkovice hustles back to second. That was interesting right there. We saw the picture of Guijan just before Key went to throw the pitch. He glanced back at the catcher's glove. He got an idea just exactly where Witt was sitting and then stroked it into left field. From that shot right there, Guijan had a pretty good idea. Still was fooled on the pitch because it was a breaking pitch and just serves it into left field. But that'll be something that Witt might want to take note of before because Guillen certainly looked back to see where that glove was, see where he was setting up. In the years that you caught Jimmy Key, you ever seen him rattled nope. out there in the mound? Always in control, even that yep. first year he came up when he worked out of the bullpen. You know, I think that just goes back to a good, solid foundation. Good college career at Clemson. All the way back to mom and dad. Mom and dad <laughs> deserve some credit as well, but he's always got a lot of confidence and he prepares himself for the game so well. You know, it's all Doesn't his father of work at NASA? He's in missile command still. I hope he doesn't get rattled. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I've seen Jimmy Key rattle when he misses a three foot putt. Then he's hot. One one pitch to Gallagher. There's that good fastball in on Gallagher's hands as he got that running fastball up and into the right handed batter. But he's certainly in command always thinking out there thinking a pitcher two ahead. If I throw a good fastball here on this pitch, I'm going to come back with a sinking fastball away. As a catcher boy, you really enjoy working with a guy like Key because you can sit down and map out the game plan through the entire nine innings. Lucky like overthrew that a little. Evens up the count at two and two. Seven and one against the White Sox. He's had good success. Seven and four. I said one. I really can read that. It says 74. Gallagher has grounded out twice in the first inning and again in the fourth. The breaking ball just slipped out of his hand. So now what he's done by going to a full count is he's allowed the runners at second and first to get a running start here. Parker Vice at second, Gijan at first, and Gallagher the batter. That's a foul ball. So Karkovice will head back to second. And Guijan to first. The count remains full to Dave Gallagher.
Gallagher's tied for fifth spot in the American League. Base hits with Mike Greenwell. Fly ball, right field. Felix has got a hustle. He's got it. What a catch. Unbelievable. There's no substitute for great speed, and boy, Felix was on his horse to catch this ball. A little looping, sinking liner out into left field, and boy, I don't know if you can call that a catch. That ball was scooped on the grass, but he comes up with it cleanly. We'll take it anyway. You can see him smiling in the dugout, and Jimmy Key dodges a bullet here in the fifth inning. Oh, what a play, Junior Felix. Four to one, Jays lead it. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now let's go to this TSN sports update. It was blowing up this shot in right field. That catch by Felix Buck. Have a look at it. Gallagher's looping ball. Let's see if the grass gets underneath it. It looks like it rolled along the top of the grass right there. But still, Felix came up with it. Showed it to the umpire, Greg Kosk, the first base umpire who had come out to shallow right field. It's all academic now, but Jimmy Key died. I thought it was a catch. The umpire thought it was a catch, too, and that's all that's important. But Felix, with that great speed, really nice running catch. Sure makes a lot of difference out there, doesn't he? Witt slashes one to right field for a base hit to lead off the sixth inning for the Toronto Blue Jays. The Jays really had a chance to put this game away back in the first inning when they scored a pair, but they left the bases loaded, and that all happened with two out. Well, Witt's perfect on the night. Two for two with a walk. He drove in a run in the third, and that leads things off here in the sixth with a solid single to right field. Rance Mullinex, we'd like to see him get hot. Found it out a couple of times tonight. Just two hits in his last 26 plate appearances. His average continues to drop. He's down to 194. I'll tell you one thing. Hillegas has been hitting the outside of the plate against Mullinex, hasn't he? He certainly has to most of the hitters all night long. It's when he gets to two strikes that he's been in trouble. He hasn't been able to finish off the hitters. In a situation like this, Buck, even though you're you're up three runs, you've got Mullinix at the plate struggling. Why not drop the bunt down, move Witt on down to second base? Well, you're trying to get confidence developed in Mullinix so he can come out of this slump, and you have a cushion of three runs. You're just trying to say, well, go ahead, take a whack at him. Let's see if we can get you rolling. That's what I think. Gaston always trying to promote confidence amongst his hitters. And he wants Rance to come out of it. He knows if the Blue Jays are going to make it over the long haul. They're going to have to have a performance from Mullenix. And don't forget, in a few days, Cena's going to be the hitting coach again. And that's right, and he's protecting his other job. <laughs> <laughs> Mullenix goes down on strikes. And that is just the second strikeout for Hillegas. So that'll bring up Nelson Luriano. Luriano is two for two in the ball game. A beautiful bunt back in the second inning between the pitcher and the first baseman. In fact, uh, Hillegas did not cover on the play. Well, Hillegas has really settled in since that third inning when he allowed two runs. And he's trying to keep his ball club close enough so they can get back in this game. Hit right at Kittle off his glove. Witt should be able to go to third on this. McLaren is waving him over. Here's the throw by Kittle. And the slide by Witt, he's in there. So that will go as a base hit for Nelson Luriano. That's his third hit of the night. Kittle just couldn't get his glove up quick enough to catch the bullet off Luriano's bat. Boy, the second baseman has been swinging a hot bat. Luriano with three hits tonight. Watch him jump all over this inside fastball. Really gets on top of it and hits it right at Kittle he's kind of given ground his heart's not in it his glove was trying to get out there but his heart wasn't in it but Luriano perfect on the night three for three Jerry Royce the left hander there who was just given notice today that he will be working out of the bullpen gets out he looks for baseball right now there he's got one. He start throwing 
So Junior Felix who made that sensational catch off of Gallagher to end the fifth inning steps in. You've got Witt at third. Liriano at first one down. Felix pops that one up into the upper deck. And Buck and I will be here for extra innings. Give us a call. Collect 445-1811. And we'll even turn around and look at you. <laughs> and make sure you call because let, we, let we me, have got some great answers for your yeah, questions. Let, let me I tell you why it. Buck and I are doing the show. <laughs> They're having a fireworks display here right after the game. And last year, we had Fred McGriff on extra innings after the game during the fireworks display. And you could hardly hear him. So that's the reason that Buck and I will do the show. So give us a call. There's the fireworks right there out in center field behind the bullpen. And here's some fireworks right here. Popped Felix it pops it up. Shallow right field. Manrique out. Here comes Baines. Baines with a basket catch. Two down. And I guess one good thing about you and I doing the extra inning show is that We'll be able to look at the fireworks, too. <laughs> well, we're experts, Fergie. We've got a lot of good answers for these fans. Remember, call in. Find out what's going on with the Blue Jays right after the game. The inside story. From Buck and Hot Fergie. off the press. <laughs> you bet. Are you going to pay me for being on the show? <laughs> You're paid. <laughs> Two down for Tony Fernandez. Tony is 0 for 3, struck out in the first, flied out in the second, and popped up in the fourth. was a little bit late on that fastball. He's not staying on top of the ball, and you can see him shaking his head in disgust. He's just not staying on top of it. What's happening is that back shoulder's dropping down, causing the head of his bat to loop around and causing him to be behind pitches. You can see him trying to accentuate that downward swing where he'll stay on top. With that single by Liriano, the Jays now have reached double figures six times in the last 29 games, counting tonight. Just went after a bad pitch there. Then I guess got the fastball in on his hands and up. Very seldom do you see Fernandez go after bad pitches. And I think that's a direct result of his struggling at the plate. He's just a bit impatient with himself now. You know, just back in 86, he had 213 hits, most ever by a shortstop. And this year it's been a struggle for him. Slaps that with a foul. Staying alive with two strikes. Fernandez, of course, missed 25 days as a result of that pitch by Cecilio Guante hitting him on the face. You can see that protective shield built up on that right ear flap of his helmet covering up that cheekbone area. But he's only registered 18 hits here. And it's the 20th of May. And it's the 41st ball game of the season. Here's the one two pitch. Hit the right field right at Baines. He hardly oh, he dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. Liriano almost started to walk in. Witt scores. And the Blue Jays lead it five to one. How about that one? Harold Baines has not had too much fun out there in right field tonight. You can see that he's got it. Figures it's right in his glove and then bounces straight out. Last few years, he's been used primarily as a DH. And Jeff Torborg thought he would give him a start in right field tonight, trying to get Walker's bat into the lineup. And Harold Baines charged with an air right there, which allows the fifth Blue Jay run to come across the plate. Now the Jays lead it once again by four. So the batter will be Kelly Gruber. 
just trying to find out how many games Baines has started in right field. I know it's not too many. That's fouled out of play. Well, he has started uh, 19 games as DH. So he has had a few. This is his 37th game. So 18 games in right field. That's more than I thought. He only played nine out there last year. Groover, it's on down the line, but it is foul. Well, Baines has worked hard all winter long trying to improve his mobility because of those bad knees he's had. And he said to Jeff Torberg, I'd like to get some more games in the outfield where I can really get more comfortable once again because I feel my legs can stand it. But he's made it costly air here tonight. No balls, two strikes, the count to Kelly Gruber. Well, it hasn't happened very often this season that the Blue Jays have been handed a run like that. Five to one, Toronto leading. Blue Jays came into this game hitting 245. And with the 10 hits, they'll probably up that another two points. They're 10th in the league in hitting, 6th in pitching. But the Blue Jays lead, or the White Sox lead the American League in hitting, and they're last in pitching. Pillagas gets his strikeout, a third one of the ball game for him. But the Blue Jays get a bonus, another run here in the sixth inning and lead it five to one. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. One ball game, the Blue Jays leading the Chicago White Sox, bottom of the sixth inning. It'll be Harold Baines, Ron Kittle, and Ivan Calderon to face the left-hander Jimmy Key. Key has only given up five hits. A single to Fred Manrique in the second, a home run to Kittle in the fourth, another single to Calderon, and then Guijan and Karkovic had singles back-to-back -back in the fifth inning. Baines off the end of the bat, out of play. Have a look at this view from right, uh, right field. See that sun comes right through that hole. Maybe Baines has had problems with that out there in right field. Who knows? There's always an excuse when you drop a ball hit right at you. I don't know if Baines will use it but it could cause him a problem out there. Ground ball, Liriano. To McGriff, one down. That'll bring up Ron Kittle. Blue Jays tomorrow will send John Cerruti to the mound. He's 0-2. The White Sox will counter with Melito Perez at 2-4. He's a good-looking young right-hander. Boy, he's been struggling this year, though. He's got a 6.64 ERA. Bit of a mystery so far for the White Sox. He took something off that fastball, just sunk it a little bit further away than that pitch that Kittle hit for a home run to right center. Isn't this something how the White Sox opened up for the Blue Jays back in 77, and the White Sox will end it at Exhibition stage, uh, Stadium next Sunday? or I should say at the end of the month. You saw the way that Key snapped that ball back from Ernie Witt. He got a strike, but he didn't like the location. That's the same pitch that Kittle hit for a home run previous at bat. Ground ball, Jimmy Key. The Labatt's player of the game for Chicago will receive a complete range of shaving products from Remington, the grooming company including the Remington Ultimate Shaver, the shaver that shaves as close as a blade or your money back. Just one of the precision line of grooming products for men and women from Remington. The batter is Calderon.
that evens up the count of the ball and a strike. Monday, the Blue Jays will play three games against Minnesota starting Monday, and then they'll finish out the exhibition stadium homestand with three against the White Sox and a week this Sunday. That's it. Get to center field, Mosby. He'll wait for it for the third out. So through six here at Comiskey in Chicago, the Toronto Blue Jays lead it five to one. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Five to one ball game. Jays leading the White Sox. Seventh inning at Comiskey Park in Chicago. It'll be Bell, McGriff, and Mosby. You know, talking about that game against Chicago, the final game at Exhibition Stadium. It's called the Exhibition Stadium Farewell. And every fan attending will receive an Exhibition Stadium Memories book written by Martin Keene. That book will highlight 13 years of Blue Jays baseball at the stadium. And it should be a real collector's item. But also, there will be many more names from the past will be there. Including you, Buck Martinez, Doug Alt, some of the players that played in that very first game, Bob Baylor, Elvis Woods, other players, Cliff Johnson, Garth Orge, Rick Bosetti, and there'll be many, many more. And after it's all said and done, barring rainouts, the Blue Jays will have played 969 games at Exhibition Stadium. Those roof shots at Bell hit, weren't they monstrous? They said they well, he hit two shots. 155. Just to the left, right there, that light standard. 23 home runs have been hit up on that roof from the back home plate position. Then they moved it up, and 19 more have been hit. Obviously, that there have been fewer games since the plate was moved up. It was moved up from 83 to 85. There was only 21 of those home run shots hit before they moved it up. Hit out to left field. And Calderon will make the catch off the bat of George Bell. Here's a look behind the home plate area the plate has been moved up 19 feet I believe they changed the dimensions that much it used to be well they've changed the field two or three different times because that fence out there wasn't there for a while it was just the back wall that was it was about the, 430 feet and the bullpens were down both lines I've seen it here in the past where there was a temporary cyclone fence just beyond the warning track. So it shortened it up another 15 or 20 feet. They've tried everything at this ballpark. You remember years ago with right Bill Vec. He had all kinds of gimmicks. That one go all the way back to the screen. And I guess cut loose with that fastball. Minnesota and Toronto Tuesday night at 730 from Exhibition Stadium. Buck and I'll be there along with our producer Tom McKee, director Michael Lansbury, our stats man John Pickett, and Stephanie Williams. Did we ever give Stephanie a title? I didn't. Neither did I. Two and two to McGriff. Base hit left field. That's the reason Fred McGriff can talk about the possibility of hitting 300. Because he's patient enough when he's behind, he can really hang tough and then just drive it past the infielders on the left side. That's a tough pitch down and away from him. He drives it past Eddie Williams. And Cito Gaston has done a good job with young Fred McGriff. And now he's 
Calling down to that bullpen to see who's throwing for the White Sox more than anything. Jeff Torborg out there and looks like he's going to make a change. He's had Jerry Royce throwing. And he might want the left-hander to come in here right now to face Lloyd Mosby. But Sean Hillegas really settled in and did a pretty good job. That fifth run scored off the right-hander was the direct result of Harold Baines dropping a fly ball in right field. It'll be Jerry Royce, the veteran left-hander, making his way out of the bullpen. Royce has a record of three and two. He has made nine starts, and this will be his first appearance out of the bullpen. He has recorded one shutout. This pitching change is brought to you by Duracell, the one that lasts. So the 39-year-old veteran has come on to pitch here for the Chicago White Sox, and he has been around. He has pitched for St. Louis, Pittsburgh, the Dodgers, Cincinnati, and California. 211 Major League career victories for the left-hander. And he just today was moved down to the bullpen as Jeff Torborg and pitching coach Sammy Ellis are trying to put something together with this pitching staff. They've moved young Steve Rosenberg out of the pen into the rotation. He'll take Royce's spot. And Royce has been a bit inconsistent as a starter this year. And they're hoping that the frequency of pitching out of the bullpen will get him back on the right track. Well, Jerry was invited to spring training last year, and they figured his career was pretty well at the end of the line. But he managed to make the team and finished up winning 13 ball games and losing nine for Chicago. So he has come back this year. He is three and two so far. He really opened up uh, last year as the staff's fifth starter. Used to be an overpowering pitcher. But at this stage of his career, he's got to rely on control movement, getting his breaking ball over when he's behind in the count. And I had a long talk with him the last couple of days about just how long he might think he can be an effective pitcher. And he says, hey, I'm still having fun. I still have the ability to get some people out, and I feel I can make a contribution to a major league club, so I'm going to continue to play as long as I'm having fun and getting people out. Well, he's going to have to improve on getting people out this year. He's allowed 59 hits in just over 45 innings pitched. And the opposing batters are hitting 312 against Jerry Royce so far this year. So he's going to have to improve on that if he wants to continue to pitch. With one down, Fred McGriff at first base. The batter is Lloyd Mosby. He's two for three with three RBIs. First pitch falls in for a strike. running fastball just misses low and away. Last time that Royce appeared out of the bullpen was last year in Toronto, May the 28th against the Jays. That's popped up out of play. Boy, Mosby got a hanger from Royce right there. Just popped it back into the seats. Had a pretty good cut at it. It got underneath it. When you see those hanging breaking pitches up in the strike zone, you've really got to make yourself get on top of them and not try to lift them as much as try to hit down on them and let that good backspin off the bat allow the carry and provide the carry. But Mosby tried to lift that one and hit it up in the air foul. Evens up the count at two balls and two strikes. It was a three hour meeting this afternoon that made the decision for Jerry Royce to go to the bullpen. They need some experience out there. 
uh, Larry Himes, the general manager, and Jeff Torborg, and the two pitching coaches. Behind closed doors that long today. There goes Mosby, or there goes McGriff, and Mosby hits that one out to Calderon. Two down. That'll bring up the catcher, Ernie Witt. Witt's two for two with an RBI. Last night he had a two run single off Steve Rosenberg the left hander that Royce has replaced in the bullpen. It's a pretty critical move by Cito Gaston allowing Witt to hit against the left hander last night he very easily could have pinch hit for him. Jays at the time had a one run lead. Eleven hits for Toronto off Philogas. And just five for the Chicago White Sox off Jimmy Key. <laughs> off the middle, will Dijan get to it? He does! Oh, look at that play by Ozzy! But Ernie's safe. The ball gets away from Kittle. And McGriff will scamper on down to third. Tommy Craig, the trainer, picks that ball up, and he's not going to give it back. Well, Witt will get a base hit. McGriff will go to third on Guillen's throwing air that got away from Kittle. But Guillen had a shot at Witt. If he makes a good throw, he might get him at first base, but he threw it over Kittle's head. So give Ernie Witt a base hit. Watch this play. It really shows what kind of range Guillen has. He's in the outfield grass when he comes up with it. He has Ernie Witt if he makes a good throw, but he throws it over Kittle's head. Guillen will be charged with an error. And Ernie Witt continues his perfect night. Three hits and a walk for the catcher. So they give the Blue Jays an extra out and see if Mullinex could capitalize on it. Rance 0 for 3 tonight. Just two hits in his last 27 plate appearances. Ground ball to Rod Kittle, and he'll make the unassisted put out. So once again, Mullenix leaves two runners stranded. That's five on the night. And the Blue Jays still lead by four. You're watching LeBats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Jimmy Key coasting on a five hitter. He, the only run the White Sox have scored, a home run by Ron Kittle back in the fourth inning, is eighth of the season. Five to one, the Blue Jays leading. Manrique, Walker, and Williams will face the left hander. He has only allowed three home runs to this point this year. Dave Valley, the Seattle catcher, and a solo shot. Louis Medina, the Indians' DH. Another solo home run, so all three have been of the solo variety. And Key has really mastered that sinking fastball tonight. He has now allowed only two walks at the last 46 and a third innings. Covers the past six games. Manrique collected the first hit off key tonight, singled in the second inning. Cito Gaston's got to feel a little better about going to the bullpen if he has to, because they put together a string of 16 shutout innings. So the White Sox will be in Toronto to close out Exhibition Stadium beginning Friday and finish on Sunday. Three game series. So you figure the Blue Jays can win here tomorrow. They play Minnesota three games with Kent Herbeck out of the lineup. And then three against Chicago. They got a chance to be right back in this thing. Real quick like. The division is stacked up. Top and bottom. They win the ninth. They go to four games back. They put them only nine games under 500. It'll be a slow climb. There's a look at the standings. Boston. Got beat today out in Oakland. 
The Indians are hanging tough. The Yankees have turned it around since a very slow start. They were one and seven at one point. Fastball and Manrique is caught looking. For Jimmy Key, that's only his second strikeout of the ball game. As you look at those standings, not one club playing 500 or better. He really spots that fastball in the outside corner, but Manrique couldn't pull the trigger. You know, you look at that division just a few years ago. That was talked about as being the toughest division in baseball. Detroit having those great years. That's popped up by Greg Walker. Fernandez out of the shallow left. Bell comes in, but Tony takes it. Two down. And now you look at the American League West Division with the Angels on top. 13 games over 500. Oakland now 28 and 14 actually 14 games over 500 angels play later on tonight Kansas City's hanging tough without their star George Brett in the lineup just a game and a half off the pace starting today Buck do you feel it'll continue like this in the East Division all season long playing just 500 baseball I don't think it's going to take too many games over 500 to win it. I think it's going to be this way all the way. Makes for a good pennant race. A drive to deep right center field. Mosby. He's there and makes the catch. And another three up, three down inning for Jimmy Key as he has set down seven in a row. And through seven, the Jays lead it five to one. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Venezuelan shortstop. You hear so much about the Dominican Republic, but Venezuela's got some great shortstops. You know, we got a lot of great shortstops, like you know, any day that we got uh, every 10 years, we got uh, com somebody coming out from Venezuela. Like, we got, first of all, we got Carlos Carrasquillo. After that, we got uh, Aparicio. To follow him, we got David Concepcion. And now they got me. I hope that they find somebody out to keep the rolling. I think we got to find shortstop. I think a lot of people being assigned it, they look for shortstop because all those guys coming out good shortstop from there. But I tell you what, it's a shortstop keep coming from Dominican Republic. We we got to make a, about 20 more teams to fill those guys. Uh, here they got a lot of good minor league shortstop and uh, um, especially Blue Jays got standing shortstop and uh, I got a lot of respect for the guy you got there and I one of the best shortstop I've ever seen in my life. Now Buck, you did an interview. You understand what he said? Perfectly. He says the Dominican Republic is still the shortstop factory. We have some good ones in Venezuela. And he thinks Tony Fernandez is the best one he's ever seen in his life. What do you mean you can't understand it? That was perfect. <laughs> Jose Segura. Recent recall from Vancouver. This pitching change is brought to you by Absorbing Junior. Canada's number one liniment. So Segura has seen all of Canada. Nelson Liriano just stroked a single to right field. And for Liriano, that is his fourth hit of the ball game. He is four for four. And the batter is Junior Felix. The pitcher, Jose Segura. He was signed as a free agent back in 87 by these White Sox. He spent some time in the Blue Jay organization. Three years to be exact. He was a starter down at Kinston and Knoxville and Syracuse in 87. Segura was here Thursday to pitch in that exhibition game against the Cubs. Then he flew back to Vancouver and they called up and said, hey, come back. We need you. Felix, a base hit into right field. Liriano will head for third. So the Blue Jays have runners at the corners. They lead it five to one. And this 
Let's remind you again that this pitching change has been brought to you by Absorbing Junior, Canada's number one liniment. Well, we just had to get that little commercial in, and we're back to the ball game with Felix down at first, Liriano at third, nobody out, eighth inning. Blue Jays lead it five to one. Fernandez at the plate. Tony still looking for his first hit. And the Blue Jays here in the eighth inning have really got a chance to put this one away. 14 hits for Toronto, five for Chicago. Everybody in the lineup but Fernandez and Mullenix has a base hit on the night. Lariana with four. Perfect. Four for four. Wits three for three. I tell you, Segura deserves a medal for going out there tonight. He's got to be exhausted after going back and forth across the continent. They he's like his arm. He's got a very live arm generally, but I got to believe he's a little tired tonight. He's just happy to be here. He made four appearances with Chicago last year. Good sinking fastball right there that Fernandez swung over the top of, and Segura's out in front of ball and two strikes. Fernandez's average has dropped down to 220. Pitches outside, it's two and two. The Jays have the speediest runners on the bases. Liriano at third, Felix at first base. They've got a great combination if they choose to start the runners. Segura thinks so and chases Felix back. Felix was caught stealing in the first, and then he finally got a stolen base in the fourth inning. Karkovice, the catcher, has thrown out 10 of 14 this season. Another base hit. Fernandez to right field. Here comes Lariano. Felix will head to third. It is six to one for Toronto. Three hits in a row off Segura. And Fernandez. Removes himself from that short list of people without hits. That just leaves Molnix now as he gets a breaking pitch on the inside part of the plate and hits it just over the outstretched glove of Ron Kittle in the right field. 15 hits for the Jays tonight. It's about time. This is the way we expected him to swing the bats all year long. Six runs, 15 hits, no errors for the Blue Jays. A run on five hits and two errors for the White Sox. That's chopped foul by Kelly Gruber. Gruber tripled back in the first inning and scored. He's popped up, grounded out, and struck out. Hit right at the second baseman, Manrique, but he couldn't catch it. He did knock it down, and they got the force on Fernandez. But another run scores, and it is seven to one for Toronto as Felix crossed the plate. Kelly Gruber will get an RBI as he takes this breaking ball right back towards the second baseman, Manrique. He knocks it down, and then has to scramble to force the runner at second. But Gruber will get an RBI. Watch Guillen's foot on the bag. Watch how quickly he pulls it off. It's almost like a disappearing act. I don't know if he had his foot on the bag when he caught the ball. But in that situation, you go ahead and ring him up. George Bell, the first pitch was a strike.
He reaches and punches it into center field for a base hit. Gruber will head to third. There'll be no throw from Gallagher. So once again, the Blue Jays have runners at the corners with just one down. 1,000th base hit. They'll get that ball, and Bell will take that one home to the Dominican. But that's his 1,000th base hit. I don't know if they know it or not. You can rest assured that George won't know it. Then a looping single in the center. That's quite a milestone for George Bell. Well, George is just another base hit. He figures there's lots more where that one came from. Yeah, he thinks that way now, but it'd certainly be nice to have that ball as a memento. They don't know that that's his thousandth base hit. Segura bounces that one. Now they're going to throw that ball out of the game, and he's going to lose it. Now Dale Ford's keeping it in the game. Here comes Sammy Ellis, pitching coach. You know, this is unfortunate for Segura because he had to make those trips across the continent. He's got to be tired. He got here just about 4 o'clock this afternoon. And he told Sammy Ellis, he said, man, I'm exhausted. And now Ellis is talking to him, saying, everything all right out here? He says, hey, stick with him, buddy. See if we can get out of this thing. This isn't the ideal situation we'd like to have you pitch in tonight, but you got to pick us up. Maybe give us an inning or two and get us out of this thing. Ken that, Patterson, the left-hander, is throwing down in the bullpen. He pitched in the ball game last night, an inning in the third. Gave up a hit. Didn't give up any runs, though. So McGriff, the count, a ball and no strikes. Fly ball to left field. Calderon back to the track, and he's got it. In the second out. And here comes Kelly Gruber in to score. So for Fred McGriff, there's another RBI, a sacrifice fly. 27 runs batted in on the season. The Blue Jays now leading 8-1. Lloyd Mosby looking for his third hit in this ball game. He had three last night. Boy, he had a good rip at that high fastball. If he could chip in and get another hit right here. And have him on his way to maybe putting together a real good hitting streak and get that average up where it belongs. It was two years ago. Hit over 290. Over 96. In his, yep, he's in his ninth year. The Blue Jays. Hits that one up the middle. There it is. His third hit. 17th hit in the ball game for the Blue Jays. And Segura has certainly had a rough inning here in the eighth inning. Well, Torborg, the fifth hit off Segura, and Jeff Torborg's going to go out and rescue his young right-hander. Torborg was fired as manager in Cleveland back in 79. He spent nine years as the bullpen coach for the New York Yankees. He never managed in the minors. So oh, they're going to go to the left-hander, Ken Patterson. Well, the Blue Jays sitting on an 8-1 lead, and uh, Buck Martinez, things really started to look up for the Toronto Blue Jays since Cito took over. They won two out of three from Cleveland. And if you consider this a win here tonight, it sure should be. If well, if they don't win one. this one, they're going to have a real long summer, 8-1. to one. But there's a number for extra innings. We'll talk all about that. And about the fact that the Blue Jays can get within four games tonight with a victory here. Bring them to nine games under 500. 
And we talked about if they're ever going to make a move, now's the time. After losing three in a row in Minneapolis to the Twins last week, then they had the Indians in. They took two out of three in that series. It looks like they're going to at least take two out of three in this series. With a win tomorrow, they could sweep it, be the first sweep of a series all year long. But all of a sudden, that would be five out of six, and they certainly have painted themselves back into the picture in the American League East. You know, we talked about this last night, and we should talk about it again tonight. What happens if Cito goes back to Toronto and he stretches <laughs> and puts together a pretty nice uh, win streak, you know, seven or eight games? Well, even, you know, he goes eight and one, nine and one, something like oh. that. Then a new manager is named and he comes in. What do you think will happen to the new manager in Toronto after Cito's put together a winning streak and then all of a sudden he takes over and say he should lose one of his first two games at Exhibition Stadium? I would imagine he'll get booed, yeah, don't you think? I would think so, too. <laughs> But Gillick has said earlier that he's going to go outside the organization. And he's going to get somebody well, that's removed. Well, they feel they have to do. Ken Patterson, the left-hander, has come on. He's 2-0. This is his 17th appearance. He got the win in Detroit on Wednesday night. He went three and a third innings, despite giving up a three-run homer to Mike Heath in the seventh inning. And his first major league win was out in Anaheim. First week of the season. The White Sox got him from the New York Yankees in a deal that sent Jerry Royster and Mike Soper over to the Yankees in 87. He was a Yankees third round draft pick in 85. Basically a fastball slider pitcher. Not an overpowering guy. He's going to have to move the ball around. And he'll be used middle to short as he's being used tonight here in the late part of the game. But it's basically academic because the Blue Jays lead it by seven at eight to one. Bell's at second base. Hoyd Mosby with his third hit of the night is at first. And Ernie Witt's perfect on the night. He's three for three with a walk. Breaking pitch in the dirt. So the Jays have enjoyed a big night at the plate. Eight runs on 17 hits. And it'll fatten up a few of those averages. And boy, they need it, don't they? There it is, hit deep to right. Back, it is out of here. Kiss that one goodbye. Upper deck for Ernie Witt. Three more score, and it is 11 to 1. That's Ernie Witt's first home run of the year. Good to see that power stroke now as Ernie Witt is four for four on the night with four RBIs. And the Blue Jays lead it 11 to one. But these bats have come alive here in Chicago. Out over the plate, Witt knows it's gone. Just a matter of how far, and this one will make the upper deck. So 41 games into the season, Ernie Witt finally gets a home run and last year Ernie hit 16 Bob Brenly's going to pinch hit for Rance Molnix Brenly had his streak of four consecutive pinch hits snapped last night when he popped up look at his average at 200 which is four RBIs on the season so that makes Molnix the only Blue Jay not to get a hit He's 0 for 4. He'll be in a good mood after the game. You know, I don't think that'll bother Mullenix as long as they put up as many runs as they had. They got the victory in their pocket. Friendly pops that one up. Gallagher, the center fielder, comes in, and he has got it for the third out. But the Blue Jays here in the eighth inning score six big runs and lead it 11 to 1. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. 18,029 fans here at Comiskey Park tonight to watch this route by the Blue Jays over the Chicago White Sox. 11 to 1. 18 hits for Toronto. 5 for Chicago. As Jimmy Key done a pretty nice job tonight. This will make it three wins in a row for him. His last two outings, complete game efforts. 3-2 over Seattle. 
and 5-3 over Cleveland. If he finishes here, this will be his fourth complete game of the season. His other one was against Kansas City. He has held the opposition to three runs or less in each of his last five outings. Karkovice, the hitter. No balls and two strikes. He continues to pitch. Using all of his pitches, started Karkovice off with the curve ball, went to the change up. Now he used a sinker. Curve ball again. He's going to continue to use that pattern that works so well for him. He's not going to get away from that by throwing fastballs, although he has a 10 run lead. The only chink and key tonight Ron Kittle's solo home run. Karkovice. Pops that one up. Felix comes in. Liriano out, but Felix will take it for the first out here in the eighth inning. John Cerruti's got to be sitting on that bench thinking, hey, fellas, why don't you save a few of those hits and runs for me tomorrow? You know, he's really pitched in bad luck all year long, 0-2. But he'll be the starter tomorrow going against the White Sox, Molito Perez. You know, the play of the ball game has to be that catch that Junior Felix made off the bat of Dave Gallagher back in the fifth inning. With a Blue Jay lead of four to one. White Sox had two runners on. Saved one run for sure. For sure. Possibly two. Could have cut the lead. Oh, what a play! He caught that one. Nothing to it. He said, I'm a great fielder. You know, it was interesting, Buck. As I said earlier, I came out of the taxi today with Jimmy Key. And we got talking about a situation like this because he brought it up about Doyle Alexander. How Alexander got hit in Detroit. Watch him flip it away, say nothing to it. In the Take side that. of the head yesterday. <laughs> uh, Guillen saying, what do I got to do to get a base hit? Whoa. Alexander got hit in the face by Frank White on a line drive. And Key just snared that one. Oh, that was about an inch or two away. Now Gallagher tries to bunt. He wants to keep alive his hitting streak, which is at 14 games. Wow, that was close. I don't know if there's a better fielding pitcher in baseball than, uh, than Jimmy Key, although they give Mark Langston the gold glove every year, the last two or three anyway. Well, you know, Key really employs that theory of Widmar's. He becomes an infielder when that ball leaves his hand. Fernandez to McGriff for the third out. So we head to the ninth, and the Blue Jays are leading by 10, and a very lucky Jimmy Key walks to the dugout. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now let's go to this TSN sports update. Keep your eye on Ozzy Guillen here. You saw what happened to Key, but watch Ozzy. Look at Guillen's reaction. Once he realizes Key catches the ball, now watch him. Keep watching him. He's going to shoot him. <laughs> Key, you took a hit away from me. <laughs> Nelson Liriano has a chance for his fifth hit in this ball game. The ninth inning, Blue Jays lead it 11 to 1. Four hits for Liriano is a career high. He's done it a couple of times before tonight. Four singles. That's fouled back out of play. Don't forget tomorrow, Melito Perez at 2-4 and four against left-hander John Cerruti at 0-2. The final game of this three-game series between the White Sox and the Jays. Liriano collected four hits at Boston back in June last year and then did it again September 27th. So he enjoys hitting in Fenway Park. Pops that one up. He won't get his fifth hit. Kittle, the first baseman, takes it.
game like this, you can imagine the White Sox just want to get it over with and head for the shower. Somebody's on Kittle in that Blue Jay duckout. Junior Felix. He's got a couple of hits tonight. Two for five, a stolen base. He was caught stealing by Carker Weiss in the first inning. Made a nice running catch on a blooper off the bat of Dave Gallagher. To end the inning for the White Sox. Back in the fifth inning. That's popped up. Dijen comes in. Two down. Well, Torborg had a three-hour meeting this afternoon, and I wonder how long the meeting tomorrow will last. They might reconvene after the game tonight. You can see that the skipper's got a bit of a frustrated look on his face as Tom Hickey begins to crank it up down there. Blue Jays bullpen. The forgotten man. The bullpen. No, I don't think he's forgotten. They just want him to get back on track. They're trying to get him some velocity back. They've stretched him out, pitched him a couple of longer stints. Big swing by Fernandez. Couldn't connect on the inside fastball. Look at him smiling. I was going to hit that with nine miles. He's looking at everybody on the bench. Okay, when you have a game like this, boy, it's really a loosey-goosey atmosphere on the bench in the dugout. Everybody's having a good time. Everybody but the White Sox. Fly ball, left center field, Gallagher over. He's got it for the third out. So we head to the bottom of the ninth. For the Toronto Blue Jays leading the Chicago White Sox 11 to 1. You're watching the Bats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. The Blue Jay manager Cito Gaston wants to give Tom Hankey a little work. So he has taken Jimmy Key out of the ball game. Key threw 96 pitches, 66 for strikes, going eight innings. And what a job he did. Just gave up five hits. One earned run, a home run to Ron Kittle back in the fourth inning. For Tom Hankey, his 14th appearance, 10 strikeouts in 11 and two-thirds innings. And that's what Tom has been complaining about, lack of work, and that's why he's getting an inning in here tonight. Well, they're trying to rebuild his confidence. He's... Lost some confidence in that fastball, but the last couple of times out, he's had a little more zip in this fastball. And they're trying to get him back in that good frame of mind where he can come right at the hitters and be aggressive. Bottom of the ninth inning, Baines, Kittle, and Calderon for the White Sox. Well, Hankey pitched an inning in the third against Cleveland on Tuesday night, and he got his second win. He wasn't that pleased with his effort, though. He did strike out two, but he walked three. Fastball for a strike to Baines. Harold 0 for 3 tonight. Good changeup. That's a pitch that's been consistent for Hankey. That's been pretty good all year long. He's just been hurt by being behind in the count and having to come in there with that fastball. He's way out in front now to Baines. See how he finishes them off here. This is outside with the fastball. Baines likes the ball out over the plate anyway, but especially here in this situation with himself in a hole, one ball and two strikes, he's really trying to protect out over that plate. Sometimes becomes vulnerable inside. Fly ball, left field. Now that's Ducey out there. Ducey comes in and makes a fine running catch. Tested immediately, he comes in defensively for George Bell and makes a nice sliding catch on a liner off the bat of Harold Baines. Good reactions right here as he broke quickly on it and caught the sinking liner. 
Just above his thigh. Ducey has not played since Cito took over as manager. And he had a meeting with him the other day, and he said, listen, you just got to stick with me, Rob. I'll get you in there. It's going to be a while. Everybody in that Blue Jays clubhouse has to put all their personal feelings beside, aside until they get this thing straightened out. That's the last thing you'd want to hear coming out of that clubhouse now is, hey, I, I'm mad. I want to I want to play some more. This team's got bigger problems than individual problems, and you got to put them all together in one basket. Say, hey, we got to get it straightened out as a team. We've got to work together. Well, tonight's win will give Cito Gaston four out of five. Cito and the Blue Jays. It's not a bad way to start. And even the game they lost against Cleveland on Wednesday night, it was a game that really, I thought the Blue Jays were going to come back and win it. They had a chance in the eighth inning and again in the ninth. Look at the line on Jimmy Key. Five hits, two strikeouts, didn't walk anybody. Continues that streak yep. where he's been so effective. Only two walks control. in 48 and a third innings. And Hankey gives up a walk to Ron Kittle. That'll bring up Ivan Calderon. The base on balls really has been a, a big problem for Tom Hankey. You want that short man out of the bullpen to be able to throw strikes. Well, not only Hankey, but Ward. He's been plagued by some wildness as he's allowed 17 walks in just 29 and two-thirds innings. You look at Wells, he's allowed 10 walks in 27 innings. So the walks have caused the bullpen some heartaches. Change up pulled foul outside the bag at first. The couple of right-handers that have joined the Blue Jays recently in the bullpen, Dwayne Bice, worked four innings, just allowed one hit in his first outing, and Frank Wills, he was impressive in three innings of work. They should make a nice contribution to this bullpen. Talking to Whitmar about Frank Wills, and he's really impressed him. He said he should have made the club out of spring training, but he couldn't because of the ruling. And he came on the other night and uh, he said he's just so much better than he was a year ago. So he keeps everything around the knees. Fly ball to Mosby in center field. Two down. So the Jays just one out away from winning their 16th game of the season. They will now be four games back of Boston. And just five games in the loss column. And continue to reduce that number under 500. This will get them to nine games under 500. Boy, they've got a big mountain that they've created for themselves just getting back to that 500 plateau. There's a good fastball on the outside corner. Fred Manrique. There's been a lot of disgruntled fans, you know, because of the start. They were expected to do much better, but it's early in the season, and really, if you're a fan, you just can't give up on the Blue Jays. They've got the ability and the, and the talent to come back. Another good fastball. Now here's where Hankey in previous years would drop down and come with that good sidearm fastball when he's ahead in the count like he used to Manrique. No balls, two strikes. Let's see if he drops down to the side. Nope, up top. Blows him away. Good fastball by the big right-hander. This game is into the books the Blue Jays win it 11 to 1 a fine effort by pitcher Jimmy Key Key wins his fifth game the Blue Jays get 18 base hits and there are the standings the Jays just four games back of Boston and Cleveland and only five games in the lost column that's the most important thing so Tom Hankey with uh, a good outing is an inning here in the ninth inning gets a strikeout so there it is, the final score. The Jays win it 11 to 1. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now it's, t now it's time for the TSN turning point, brought to you by Converse. It was the fifth inning here at Comiskey Park. 
Gallagher, the hitter, watches he hits a fly ball to right field. Junior Felix, a long way to come, makes a spectacular catch with two runners on. The score at the time was four to one, the Blue Jays leading, and that prevented the White Sox from getting any closer. But a cash donation will be made to Amateur Sport on behalf of TSM and Converse, King of the Hill. You're watching the Bats, Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Labatt's Blue Jays baseball has been brought to you by Labatt's Blue, the clean, true taste of Canada. By Esso retailers and agents across Canada. By your local bottler of Coca-Cola Classic. And by General Motors of Canada. This has been a special presentation of the Sports Network, produced in association with TV Labatt by authority, the Toronto Blue Jays. The final score, the Blue Jays hang one on the White Sox, 11 to one. The winning pitcher, Jimmy Key at five and two. The loser, Sean Hillegas at one and five. The Labatt's players of the game for Toronto, Jimmy Key, he'll receive Cannon's new Prima shot. And for Chicago, Ron Kittle. He'll receive a selection of Remington products. As well, an amateur baseball team will be the guests of Key and Cannon at a future Blue Jays game. And all members of the Blue Jays pitching staff receive a selection of fine gifts presented by Duracell, the one that lasts, and by Zorbean Jr., Canada's number one liniment. Our baseball magic winner, John Watts from Don Mills, Ontario. Major League Baseball next on TSN, Tuesday, May 23rd at 7.30, when the Jays host the Twins. And on the 24th at 10.30 Eastern, the Expos and the San Francisco Giants. Now stay tuned for Extra Innings. It'll be the old Buck and Fergie show. We'll be back in just a moment.